Aleluya, buenos días. Aleluya. Aleluya. Come on now. Aleluya. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We got an extra hour of sleep. We should be able to have our praise on today. Hallelujah. This time, let us receive a selection from the Cathedral Choir under the direction of Elder Roderick Rose. Every day he blesses me. At this time, we remain standing for our invocation by Minister Sean Kennedy, followed by the Old Testament reading by Ella Davis, and New Testament reading by Minister Freeman. Receive him in that order. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, my life would be drifting, yeah, like a ship without a sail. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without God, my life would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Well, tell him, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
We thank you this morning today, oh God. We thank you this morning, oh God. You've been so good to us, oh God. And we thank you today, oh God. You kept us early, oh God. You kept us all week, oh God. And we tell you thank you this morning, oh God. We thank you for your mercies today. We thank you for your grace today. We thank you for loving us today. And oh God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross. But us, oh God, we thank you for him today, oh God. God, we ask that you anoint this place, anoint this service, anoint this service. Saturate the atmosphere, oh God. Saturate this place, oh God. Let your spirit be in the room. Let your power be in the room. Let your glory be in the room, oh God. Let your glory be in the room, oh God. God just wants you to show up, oh God, and show out, oh God. Do what only you can do, oh God. Let somebody be healed. Let somebody be delivered. And let somebody be set free, oh God. Let somebody be saved today, oh God. God, we thank you today, oh God. And God, while you're here, oh God, we ask that you touch our speaker today, oh God. Touch our pastor today, oh God. Strengthen him, oh God. Use him, oh God. Use him today, oh God, to speak to these your people, oh God. If you do these things, Father, we'll tell you thank you. We'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and amen. verses 1 through 6 read as does I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make her boast in the Lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears they looked unto me unto him and were lightened, and his faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all of his troubles. May God for the blessing for you. chapter of Matthew verses 1 through 12 and seeing the multitude he went up into a mountain 
when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth, taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. This flight that's taken off. We we up there right now. Hallelujah. At this time, let us have a selection by the cathedral choir, followed by the affirmation of faith from Minister Lang. Amen. We're going to ask you to stand with us this morning as we sing, Lift Him Up, Him 25, How to Reach the Masses, Men of Every Birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. And if I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Here we go. How to reach? How to reach the, the masses, men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. If I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men. Verse 2. Oh, the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust him and do not doubt the word that he said. I'll draw all men. Come on, lift him up. Lift, lift the Savior up. Lift the Savior up. Still he feeds from eternity. And I, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw. Verse 3. Don't let's all the preacher. Lift the Savior up till he speaks from me time. And if I, if I, yes, I draw.
verse 4. Lift him up by living as a Christian on. Let the world in you the Savior see. Men will gladly follow him who once taught our wrong. Come on, clap those hands. Oh, 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 lift, lift the Savior up. One more time. Oh, lift, lift the Savior up. Lift the Savior up. Still he speaks from eternity. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only infallible written word of God. We believe in the blessed hope, which is in the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. We believe that the generation, regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We believe that the baptism in the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for it. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This time we have praise and worship. Hallelujah. I'm going to start singing in a minute. Uh. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We just come to say, Hosanna, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah. Worthy lamb that was slain, crucified, my debt was paid, son of God, Emmanuel, praise your name, we praise your name, say worthy lamb. Worthy lamb. 
that was slain, that was slain crucified. crucified, my dead was buried, sing son of God, God. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, praise your name, praise your name. we praise your name, praise your name. sing Hosanna. Blessed be, blessed be the rock of heaven. Sing hope. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Jesus is the Jesus Jesus wherever I need him. Jesus is I call the Jesus, 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 Jesus is the Lord. healing in his name. Jesus is the Lord. Healing in the Lord. Healing in the Lord. He can heal diabetes. He can heal those cancer cells. He can heal the migraine. Yes, he can. in our home. Peace in the rock. Peace in the rock. Peace in the rock. Oh, then, blessed be yes. the rock. Yes. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, then, oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. I'm going to sing it again. Oh, Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Oh, blessed be the rock of my salvation. My salvation. Oh, Hosanna. Don't you have to pray? 
Hallelujah. The blessings go up. The praises go up. The praises go up. And the blessings come down. When the praises go up. When they go. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. I, I, I feel real good right now, but we got to keep going. At this time, let us receive the first lady of this house, Missionary Vicki Hughes, to welcome our visitors. Good morning, Jesus. How do you do? So glad to be here, Lord. I thank you. I want to worship. St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ, and forgive me, giving honor to God, to Pastor Hughes, to the pulpit clergy, and to everyone that assembled this morning. Good morning. And I stand before you to welcome our visitors, those who may be viewing for the first time via live stream, and also welcome those who are here in person with us. And on today, we have joining us Christian Todd, uh, we have Lady Carrie Treadwell along with her husband, Apostle Treadwell, and also we want to welcome uh, Brother Alexander Wright. And they're all guests of Apostle um, Charles Wright and Dr. Stephanie Wright. And we want to welcome you all here to St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ. And you can see we love praising the Lord, and we want you to join in with us praising the Lord, because we praise the same God. Amen. And so welcome this morning. If there's anything that you need, please feel free to ask the usher or uh, the greeters or even me, and we will try to accommodate you as much as possible. Thank you. Hallelujah. At this time, we ask for a selection from our choir, and then our pastor will further the service.
like to come before you all today. As we often get up and prepare you all, thank you for civil giving. Everything that you all do to contribute to St. Stephen, it is because you were able to do the things that we do. This morning, Pastor was able to dedicate the chairs this morning. So we're adding to God's house. I turn it over to the pastor. Has he given us the instruction to do certain things? We, we just take those instructions and we run with it. Pastor, it's up to you. All right. Amen. Would you tell us a bit about it? Amen. The Amen. Uh, gentleman that you work with. Well, one of the things here that Pastor desired was to beautify God's temple. And he gave us a task. As we've seen some of the things in this church that need to be repaired, replaced, and we did just that. We went back to the same vendor who crafted our beautiful podium. And if you see the podium, it is identical to what's under that sheet. Seeing is believing. And when we see that some of our pioneers and some of our teachers are on the old podium, we know we need to do some repairs to the old podium. But sometimes that we are looking at it from a safety precaution. We don't want anyone to fall. So God laid it on our heart and laid it on our pastor heart to replace it. We did just that. So just want to let you all know, it's all for God's glory. Pastor. Again, unveiling is an act of instance of presenting, displaying, or revealing something for the first time. This time we ask the brethren to unveil a new lectern. As Ella Davis said, we talked to Pastor Willard, and this is custom. There's nothing made like this. This is the first. Look what God is doing at St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ. For the mothers, we have a cup holder. Lectern is a reading desk with a slanted top, which documented the holes of books of supported reading, scriptures the sermons. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for many blessings that you bestowed upon us. God, we come before you asking that this election be used only for preaching the inspired and infallible word of God. May those who stand behind this lectern always be faithful and rightly divide the word of truth and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, we dedicate this lectern Proclaiming the word of God in scripture, preaching, teaching and singing, and praying. Give us ears to hear and hearts to obey. That word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. Father, we dedicate this lantern in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Beautiful, beautiful. Hey. Somebody shout hallelujah. This is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Praise him, help him to praise him. serve here, amen, the St. Stephen Church of God in Christ, amen, and, and what a blessing that they have leaders of men and women, amen, not only they say they have your back, but amen, they actually put it to action, so we're grateful to be here on the day around the Chairman Mitchell, amen, all the deacon boards, all our trustees, executive board, evangelists, missionary, but on today, amen, I have the honor and privilege, I was talking to my wife the other day. And I was saying that uh, for one of the brothers in the church, we'd like to uh, make a special presentation to on today. Amen. I call him my Swiss Army Knife. And some of you younger folks may not know what a Swiss Army Knife is. It has a Phillips screwdriver, it has a cork. Amen. It has a Philip and a blade. Amen. So today, uh, Lady Hughes and I want to recognize Deacon uh, Elder Delvery Davis Sr. This is a Swiss, don't take it to woods now, Mike. Uh, Swiss army knife. Uh, the Lord called Bishop Thomas home to rest. Amen. And I was doing so many things. And Ella Davis said, the Lord had placed upon him heart, on his heart, amen, to assist me in many capacities. Amen. I'm, thank God I don't have to go to bank anymore. He's a banker. And he do whatever needs to be done in the church. So today we like to present... This gift to you from Lady Hughes and I. Turn around, turn around. Take your basket around. Take your basket around. Amen. She contacted uh, Missionary Carissa Davis, said you like spicy things, so amen. We didn't give you anything to drink, but your wife, she's going to give you something to drink on that. You can hold it for him. Amen. And also, amen. Take that from me. We have a special. Amen. Yes, we got a few juice in here to help cool you down on that. But uh, on this, we want you to take this out. Take this out the bag. This is something special for you. Amen. We got. Amen. We talked to Mother Davis so she knows, you know, what you like to have. 
She said he's a Tennessee Titan fan. So we bought a jersey, Derrick Henry. Words cannot express our gratitude for your service at the St. Stephen Church of God in Christ. We just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Pastor. He's back in the Bazaar, Ella Joaquin Ortiz. Hallelujah. To serve with love. Point the camera at him because he's uh keep pointing the camera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, he always gives uh, something about Elder Davis. He's always giving time and and to see his face to receive is uh, is humbling. <laughs> Hallelujah! Beautiful ceremony, beautiful dedication. Yeah. Hallelujah! So yesterday we were here. Um, cleaning the choir stand, and I told the boy, my son, that uh, we had a priority. I believe that priorities are done first, and then the fun comes later. The priority was to come here. And uh, he came in, he said he didn't know what to do. I said, go up there. And he was cleaning, and I thought about Mother Terry. Because he went from there to the altar being prayed on to there. <laughs> Missionary Pamela told him, uh, can I help you clean something? He was down here cleaning and I was just looking at him. I was going to look at God. Look at God. And for that I'm grateful for St. Stephen's. For that I'm grateful. Hallelujah. It's time that we all engage in the, let me get myself together here. When an unsaved person, all they know to do is to sing Amazing Grace. And that's all I did when that boy was born. But then to hear mother tell me, just keep him on a prayer line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> time to believe in God, oh God. It's no time to play around, I tell you. you, you say, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, time that we share in the ministry of giving. Second Corinthians. Hallelujah. did it. God did it. God did it. Oh, God did it. God did it. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 to 7. But they say he which sow it sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which sow it bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. I often tell the Sunday school, it's automatic, it comes from us. So we want to give because it's in us to give. Not to be seen giving, but just to give to God's house. You either have it or you don't. That's the way it goes, right? 
You either have it or you don't. God knows what you have. I have uh, tithes from Deacon Hartfield. Offering from Patricia Gregory. Offering from Darren Perry. Elder Rose is sharing his tithes on his offering. Excuse me. And then Sister Velma Edinburgh is sharing her tithes. All standing. Elder Davis has the credit card machine. You can give through Giblify. Ronnie Ford is sharing an offering. If you write a check, if it could be for today, that'd be nice. Outstanding. Oh, precious Father, Lord, bless this offering. Lord, bless those that are giving and those that have a desire to give, but don't, Lord. But Lord, continue to bless this house. St. Stephen's, Lord, continue to bless the congregants and our pastor and the first lady. In Jesus' powerful name we pray, the only name that saves and the only name that delivers and the only name that sets free. Amen and amen. I thank you, Jesus. I 
Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't. Hallelujah. I, I told Elder Rose I like I enjoy watching him. I try to sing like it, but it doesn't come out that way. But uh <laughs> and my dance I'm still stuck on my left foot, so I gotta work on that too. But we love you, Elder Rose. At this time let us receive missionary evangelist Tanika Rashada Antoinette Ortiz for the announcement. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. You know, that pastor, that thing messed me up. He went to talking about the boy. Amen. I thank the Lord. I just want to say openly, I thank you, God, for what you've done. Amen. I thank the Lord for what he's done. Amen. <laughs> you know, pastor, if I can, right quick, you know, I just, when they tell you your child got an illness in the womb, you know, it, it take on a different look, you know. When you ain't living right and you've been, you been raised in holiness, you know, come on. Uh, but I remember what my mother said before the Lord called her home. She said, I see a, I see a boy in your womb. I wasn't pregnant yet. Come on. Uh, she said, and he's whole. Amen. You know. I had to get myself right. The mister had to get himself right. But God's promises are yea and amen. And so we thank the Lord for his promise. Amen. In none other than Octavio Joaquin Ortiz. Amen. Amen. Went from not thinking he was going to walk, talk, to look at him now. God is somebody. Yes, sir. So when Elder Rose was trotting across the altar, I wanted to trot with him. Amen. Because God is somebody in our lives. Amen. And his promises are true. I stand before you to give you the announcements. For St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ, located at 189 South Birdneck Road, in the historical community of SeaTac, where none other than the pastor, the watcher, amen, of this house is none other than Elder Bruce Elliott Hughes Sr., amen. We are, we can clap on that, amen. We are in the month of November, and you've received a couple of emails from me, amen, already. Just want to advise um, on one item 
uh, and you will receive the remainder of the uh, announcements via email, amen. So make sure that you get with me if I don't have your email. But we have moved the vision meeting, amen, from Monday the 6th to the 7th, same time in person at 7 p.m. And there was guidance that was sent out in regards to the auxiliaries, the departments that the pastor wanted us wanted to present. Please be mindful of that. If you're not able to attend on Tuesday, November 7th at 7 p.m., please ensure that you have a representative who will be able to speak on your services and events that you've held since the last vision meeting of August, amen. And on that Monday, he advised of a community item in regards to uh, CTAC being uh, entered into the National Register, amen. That's about our community. So please be mindful of that. That is going to be held at 6.30 at uh, the Virginia Beach Convention Center. I'm sorry, y'all, I don't have my phone with me, amen. And our pastor, we know he is about the community. He just don't talk about it. He just don't have a street named after Hughes Avenue, come on. But he is a worker in the community and he will be present there. It is open to the public to hear uh, how the nomination process uh, went up, came about, and also the concerns that it may have in regards to those who have uh, residents here, amen. So you are welcome to attend that again. That is on Monday, November 6th at 6.30 p.m. And then the service of the church, amen, in regards to our vision meeting has been moved again to the 7th, amen. And if you are, uh, you know, looking on uh, via online as well as attended church today, if you were on time, it was probably because you didn't fall back, amen, because our time has fallen back. Uh, be mindful of that, that time has fallen back an hour, amen, and govern yourselves accordingly to that. And I have something to read. A very special thank you with sincere appreciation, amen. And this is, uh, and it was written, thank you. And this is love from the Wilson Mitchell family. We love you, amen. And we know that that was in the latest in regards to the death that they had in the family. We are keeping all that are dealing with uh, grievement in prayer because we know that the Lord is a comforter of our hearts. Uh, please know that I love you with the love of Jesus Christ, and please govern yourselves accordingly to these announcements and the announcements to follow via email for the month of November. Amen. Amen. It's time that we hear from heaven. Uh, I have a bio here, and I may read some of it, not all of it. And the reason being is that our pastor, he's just extraordinary. Uh, like Bishop Thomas would say, uh, Bishop Mark Thomas would say, yeah, magnanimous, awesome. Elder Bruce Elliott Hughes Sr. was born in February 26, 1963 in Virginia Beach, Virginia in a historical section called CTAC to the late Deacon James and Geneva Hughes. Received educational training from the Virginia Beach School System, graduated from First Colonial, Attended Tidewater Community College, Old Dominion University, and C.H. Mason Bible College. A graduate from the North Carolina College of Theology with a bachelor's degree in Biblical Studies. That happened this year. Yeah. He joined St. Stephen's in 1983 under Pastor Turlin Thurlin Burden. Elder Hughes was licensed as a minister in 2001 ordained as an elder in August 2006 by the late Bishop Ted Thomas. Elder Hughes was appointed as executive pastor for St. Stephen's in 2012. He has served as a Sunday school superintendent on the trustee board, chairman of the elders council, administrative assistant on the finance committee, as well as armor bearer to the late Bishop Ted Thomas, general board member. He serves as the chairman of the ordination board and serves on the state finance committee for the first jurisdiction of Virginia. In 2019, he was appointed as Assistant District Superintendent for the Virginia Beach District, where he serves faithfully under the leadership of Superintendent Timothy White. He was installed as pastor of St. Stephen's Church of, Christ, Church of God in Christ in September of 2021. Retired from the Virginia Beach City Public School System after 42 years. Been married for 34 years to his pa partner in ministry, 
the Miss Vicky C. Spence Hughes. That's what this has right here, right? <laughs> Just reading the bio, right? right? To gift the son, Deacon Tyler Xavier and Deacon Bruce Elliott Jr. and the sound systems. Elder Hughes is a loving husband and dedicated father and spiritual father and uncle to many. He's honored to serve as a pastor of St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ. His desire is to follow the legacy of the great leadership of our former pastors. In 2021, Pastor Hughes was honored to have a scholarship endowment in his name, the Bruce Hughes SeaTac Community Scholarship. He's grateful to serve his birthplace, the SeaTac community. He has a vision to minister to the community and his people by working and sponsoring programs. Um, but Pastor Hughes, to me, is a, an interesting man. Um, he was the first person that actually greeted me at St. Stephen's. He, and I know my wife says I'm kind of emotional, but he gave me a Sunday school book. I still have it. It has his name on it. And then when I got my black book, I said, can you sign it for me? And that's the only one I use, and that's the only one I'm going to be using. It's all written up, and that was because through his guidance. In 2020, January 2020, I had to do a eulogy for my father who passed away. And I was prepared for that because of you. Because you had us here training, and we walked up and down the aisle doing the sacraments and doing what is required for, the, for us to be prepared. If it was not for that, I would not have been prepared for that. And I look at those trainings, and I see him with Elder Davis, and I see him with Minister Kennedy, and all of the ministers and the deacons, and he's always teaching. I know that I'm kind of hard-headed at times, but I do listen to what you're saying and what your desires are. Um, and like I said last week, I don't do anything without his permission. And that's because I have reverence to you as the pastor of this church. And we have to follow. Men need leaders. I don't care how old you are, you're going to need a leader. And I most definitely am honored to be a congregant of this church and to be under the leadership of Pastor Bruce Elliott Hughes. So at, after this choir sings, I'm going to throw a couple of adjectives in there. Choices, selections, all the way from SeaTac. <laughs> the next voice you're going to hear is from Pastor Bruce Elliott Hughes. Receive them with a great amen, amen and on your feet.
give you all the glory. It belongs to you all the praise. Come on, let's praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. Come on, praise him. Is he your rock on this morning? Is he your fortress? Are you trusting in the name of Jesus? Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, once again, we thank you for your love and kindness. 
We thank you for your tender mercy, for your grace. Thank you for your goodness and your bountiful blessing that you extended towards us on today. And God, before we ask you anything, we pause to tell you everything. Thank you for all that you've done for us, God. Thank you for keeping us, God. Thank you for filling us with your Holy Spirit, oh God. Thank you for allowing us an opportunity to worship you today, God. In the beauty of holiness, oh God. Realize many desire to be here on today. And God, are not able to make it on today. We thank you for touching with your finger of love and giving us the strength and the ability to come to your house of worship on today. God, our prayer today that we look on the sick and afflicted throughout this land, oh God. Look on the absent body of the St. Stephen Church of God in Christ. That desire to be on today, God, and not able to make it. Prayer today to look on Mother Sarah Caldwell and look on Mother Alice Fenner. And God, we pray for Mother Elizabeth Britton and Mother Louise Felton and Sister Dinah Hughes and Sister Bernice Forbes and Brother Bruce Spellman. God, we pray today look on Sister Ratisha Moye. God, continue to touch her, continue to strengthen her body on today. Look on Mother Missouri Land, God. In the name of Jesus, God, look on Mother Durham, God. Touch her body on today. Look on Brother Paul Hughes, oh God. Touch him on today, God. And those desire to be here, God, throughout this land, oh God. Touch and heal. And those of you live stream on today, touch the sick and afflicted, God. Lying in the hospital bed, oh God. Look on Wilbur Hartfield, God. Strengthen his body even now, God. You're able to raise him up, oh God. If we only trust and believe in you, God. God, we pray to have you in this place, God. That your glory cloud fill this place, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we yield ourselves to you, God. Have thine own way, God. Have your way in us, oh God. In the name of Jesus. God, we need you today, God. We can't live, we can't move without you, God. God, we need your help on today, God. Touch by your power, God. Touch by your might, God. In the name of Jesus. We bind every devil and demon that come up against you, God. It's not luck of you, God. We bind it now. In the name of Jesus. Look on the situation of Israel, oh God. Touching Ukraine, oh God. Even in Russia, oh God. In the name of Jesus. We bind the devil, God. We plead the blood. Look upon our children, God. Protect and overshadow them, cover with your blood. Bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. Pray that you hide me beneath Calvary's cross on today. God, let the words I speak, the meditations of my heart, and let them be acceptable and pleasing in your eyesight. And these are the blessed words in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. The presence of the Lord on today. And certainly we give honor to God on today who's ahead of my life. Amen. The author and the finish of our faith on today. Amen. My testimony today that you'll find me saved by the blood of the Lamb and sanctified and baptized and filled with God, precious Holy Ghost. Got a mind to run on, striving to see what the end is going to be on today. So we honor, amen, our presider, the Dr. Joaquin Ortiz, Jr. Amen. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, doing your introduction, amen. It got me choked up a bit, amen. So I'm trying to uh, hit the reset button and reset on again. We certainly honor and grateful to have, amen, Chief Apostle, amen, with us on today, Chadwell, Tread, Treadwell, amen, amen, thank God for you, amen, take your time out of your schedule, amen, just to be with us on today, amen, we'll give him opportunity to give remarks, amen, we know he's a gospel preacher, amen, so we're going to give him remarks, amen, Apostle Charles Wright came along with him, amen, along his brothers here, amen, First Lady's here on today, amen, we're happy to have him on today. Amen. We had the opportunity to go out with uh, Apostle Charles Wright and Dr. Wright. Amen. And they just spoke so kindly of you, man. I tell you, you're a great man of God. Amen. So we're honored to have you on today. Amen. Let's give him a hand ovation. Welcome him to the St. Stephen's. Amen. Church of God in Christ. Amen. After I finish uh, reading a few passages of scripture, amen, we want to give him opportunity, amen, to greet us here at the St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ. Amen. Thank God for all the clergy that are present. Amen. Minister Freeman coming back from vacation. Amen. Minister Kennedy is here. Amen. Ella Wilson is here. Minister James Bird is here. Amen. Minister Land is here. I thought I saw Minister Ella Wilson. Amen. Ella Davis. Amen. Our Swiss Army Knife man, amen, is here. 
Amen. On today, just want to read a few passages of scripture. Amen. Missioner Ortiz gave out some uh, very, very important announcements. So we're asking those, Amen. If you live in the SeaTac community, Amen. If you don't live, Amen. Have relatives, please, Amen. Meet us at the Virginia Beach, Amen. Convention Center tomorrow, 6:30 p.m. Amen. We thank God for Spa Missionary Parker. Amen. She gave us another announcement. Amen. They're having a uh, comprehensive plan meeting on Thursday. Amen. Also at the convention center. Amen. It's, the question is, what would the future hold for Virginia Beach District dealing with the transportation? So, amen. There's another, amen, opportunity for us to go, amen, to find out what's happening, amen, in our community. Amen. We need to know what's going on. Amen. Sometimes, amen, they try to pull things over on us. Amen. If we don't pay attention, we don't attend the meeting. Well, listen, they're not concerned about what's happening in the community. So, please, amen, join us. Amen. At door events and also um, spoke with a lady. Uh, they're having another event, a Veterans Day celebration at Union Kinsfield uh, Princess Anne Training Center is at the museum. Amen. The Renaissance Academy. So, amen. They want to encourage the young people to come and find about the history. Amen. Of 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 Union Kinsfield and I was amazed that Amen Union Baptist Church and the Monolith Baptist Church and they had. You know, had, we didn't have schools back then. They had people at the churches. They had schools, and they had one lady come together as the superintendent, amen, and, and things got together, you know, with the leadership, amen, the various communities. So, amen, if you're not doing anything Saturday, amen, go to the Uni, Union Kinsville, amen, uh, celebration that they celebrate the veterans today. Amen. I want to read a few passages of scripture. Amen. I've already spent most of my time, amen, making dedications and presentations. Amen. I'm just happy what the Lord is doing. The Lord is blessing us. Amen. And if we give our tithes and offering, amen, for the upbuilding of, upbuilding of God's kingdom, tearing down the stronghold of Satan, the Lord has blessed us tremendously. Amen. We were blessed with this sacred desk. And you look down there, we were blessed with a new, amen, holy communion table. Amen. We just dedicated, amen, a lecture on today. From the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 11, verses 23. We're already a few here and a few there. Amen. We thank God for those who are uh, making preparation to go, amen, to a holy convocation. Amen. Uh, Ella Donnie, Gregory, uh, Sister Faye, and Dalton are already there. Amen. Dr. O's and her team and some others are planning to go. Amen. We're praying for their traveling mercy that they would have a Benjamin feast. Amen. A landslide from glory. For I received of the Lord that which I delivered also unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night which you betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and uh, drink this cup, you do show the Lord death until he's come. Wherefore, whosoever eateth this bread and drinketh this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. We'll end right there. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. And this book will keep you from sin. Sin will keep you from reading this book. May be seated, the presence of the Lord. And from the Amplified uh, version of the Bible, verse 24, in which we're going to lift our text from 24 to 26. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in affection, remembrance of me. In the same manner, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant ratified and established in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in affection, remembrance of me. For every time you eat 
this bread and drank this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact the Lord's death until he comes again. Thank you, Jesus. So on this week, uh, Van Lewis, Cynthia Burton, and her altar gear workers, they came out of church Thursday evening to make preparations to serve Holy Communion on today. They took the time to uh, prepare the fine linens, wash them, iron them, and set them aside to make preparations for this day. Yesterday, they came into the church to place the fine linens on the lower and the higher altars. They placed the, element, the vessels and the elements in their proper place, and they stood back to make sure that everything was in its proper order, trying to do things to perfection. They served in the capacity because they realized the significance of partaking of the Lord's Supper until he returned. So they gladly decided to come to serve the Lord as altar workers. It's a reasonable service to do. What can I render to God for all the amazing, marvelous, wonderful things that he's done for us? But they also realized that preparation for communion and remembrance of the Lord till he comes, that he was doing it. They took it personally. They're here because they were doing it. Just for me. If you allow me to use that thought on today that this sacrifice that the Lord did on the cross. I know he died for the sins of the world. But I need you to catch it. Take it personally. He did it just for me. Pray my Strengthen the Lord. Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. But not everyone accepted the gift of love that the Lord had provided for us. Him as our Lord and Savior. The Lord gave us freedom to make a decision for ourselves. He gave us an opportunity to make a choice. But there are consequences when we don't make the right choice. I praise the Lord on today for dying on the cross, rising on the third day for the sins that I have committed. That I may have a right to the tree of life. I know he did it for the world, but on today I come to praise the God of my salvation because he did it just, just for me. Sing a song I was seeking deep in sin. But the master of the sea heard my decrying from the waters. He lifted me and saved him. Thank you, Jesus. So let's first understand the meaning of the bread. As we're eating the bread, Jesus took the bread and blessed it, broke it, Gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. The body of Jesus became an offering for the sins of the world. We've been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And the priests every year stood there ministering, offering, repeated the same sacrifices which could never take away the sins. But this man offered once the sacrifices of sin forever by offering his body. He has made a perfect sacrifice that will please him to the true and the living God. <clears throat> because of man's fall from grace, from sin, man was messed up. Sin separated us from God. As a result from sin, we were alienated from the commonwealth of his glory. Sin blinding us 
from the brightness of his glory. Sin made us an outcast from all of the promises of God. Sin stripped our lives from us. We were as men, dead men, groping in darkness in the sin of God. Christ reconciled, our, reconciled us back to God. The late Bishop Thomas put it this way. Man was in a mess. We were out of the fellowship with God. God had to go back in fellowship with man. Man couldn't go to God because of his sinful ways. God could not come to man because of his holiness. So the only way that man could be redeemed to God was God had to become a man. God had to come where man was. God had to become man without participating in the fall of man. God had to become a man and have sinned his blood in order to redeem man back to himself. Jesus said, prepare me a body. And we're paraphrasing as old preachers used to preach. And I'll go back to redeem man back to God. Jesus came down through 42 generations to redeem man back to God. Bishop Thomas put it this way. Jesus wrapped himself up in human flesh to redeem man back to God. Jesus said, Bishop said, Jesus took the heavy cross, started up the rugged slope of Golgotha. There he hung between a sovereign heaven and a sin in earth and he died died until death died died until the sun and the moon and the star refused to shine died until the earth began to rock and reel like a drunken man he died until the veil of the temple were rent and we had passed through the veil and when he had died until he could die anymore with his garments rolled up in blood, he passed through it, clue to the rhyme press. John said he bowed his head in the locks of his shoulders. Thank you, dude. And he said, it is finished. The long march is over. The alien has been made a citizen. The child of the far country has been bought by Lost has been found. The lost has been brought back unto the fold. Just for me. Not as cool and sharp as, what's your brother's name? Alexander. Alexander. <laughs> but he did it. Just for me. During that time when they said Jesus died on the cross and the veil of the temple were separated. God put the temple curtains there for the sake of his people that no one could enter into the holiness of holiness and live. Only the high priest could go in and would make a sacrifice once a year. And they had tied a rope around his waist. If he wasn't right, they would have to drag him out. The veil of the temple represents separation of a holy God from Sinful human mankind, because of our sins, we had to be separated from God. Mm -hmm. The veil of the temple is a constant reminder that sinners to remember our humanity that we're unfit in the presence of God. The fact that the sin offering was offered up annually, countless sacrifice repeated over and over again, couldn't appease. Jesus through the death had removed the barriers between God and man. And now we may approach him with confidence and with boldness because he lives. Yeah. Ella Rose can sing it well. I can face, yes, tomorrow's. A partaking in the Passover bread in the case evangelist burden that we understand. That Jesus Christ has put away our sins by sacrificing himself. He willingly consented to suffering and excruciating death for us. 
His blood was not swiftly shed. He was tortured many hours before he died. He bore his body of physical suffering for sin. Under the first covenant, the sacrifice of animal for sin by the Levitical priesthood could not remove guilt of ancient Israel. The sacrifice just reminded them of their sinfulness and what type of sin they were committed. Thank you, Jesus. But the bread that we're about to partake of, the bread represents the body of Christ died on the cross for our sins. He suffered many abuse on his way to the cross. His body was hung on a rough-shaped cross, and he suffered on the cross. He gave his life for us. Thank you, Jesus. Surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed them stricken, spitting of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressing. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes. We are healed. Just for Hughes, from Hughes, from across the street. The cup represented the blood of Christ he shed on the cross. God gave us a temporary means of forgiveness through the death of animals, through the Levitical priesthood. But no sheep or sheer effort could remove the sins from the world. And God knew that. Jesus' perfect obedience brought forgiveness to all people. And I'm moving forward. Thank you, Jesus. Christ had to shed his blood for us. This sacrifice was the final one needed to save the world. His blood was enough for all of those who accept him as the Lord and Savior. So when we partake of the wine, we acknowledge him, our covenant relationship ratified by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are in effect saying we are willing to allow God, God's spirit, to work in our hearts and in our minds, meaning that we will keep God's laws deep down in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, because of his grace, because of his mercy, because of his son dying on the cross for the sins of the world. By accepting the blood of Christ for the remission of our sins, we can enter into a covenant relationship with God of the universe. I think we missed that. A covenant relationship with the true and living God. In my studies, God has chosen Israel as his chosen people. He loved them. He provided for them. He would do anything for Israel. But they had a mind. He gave us free course, a choice to do whatever we want to do. He's not making us to serve him. We serve him because we love him. We serve him because he made a way for He gave us he gave us the authority, the ability to serve him. So he loved Israel and gave him a commandment. He said, Israel, if you do this, there's no good thing that I will withhold from you. Even he telling us on today, there's no good thing that the Lord will withhold from us. But Israel went through a cycle of Disobedient, disobeying God and do whatever they want to do. But because of his grace and because of his mercy, God gave them another chance. I'm happy on today because I serve a God that will give you another chance. Don't always do what the Lord tells me to do. But I serve a God. Of 
have another chance. Thank you, Jesus. And we study in the book of Jonah. He got upset with God. He didn't want God to forgive the Assyrians because they were wicked folks. And he decided to go another way. He said, God, I didn't want to go because I know that you are a gracious God. You are a kind God. You are a merciful God. And if I go to Nineveh and tell them what thus says the Lord, and they repent that you will change your mind. Thank you, Jesus. We're here today. We're saved today because of God's mercy. The devil had us bound up. But somebody preached the gospel. So if you only trust in Jesus, if you give your life to the Lord, there's no good thing will it be to hold from you all today. Just just for me. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus. David put it this way. Pick up his pad, ink block and papyrus. Jotted down these few words in Psalms 84 and 11. For the Lord is a son and a shield. For the Lord give it grace and glory. David said, no good thing when we hold for them who walk upright. We serve an awesome and incredible an amazing God. The God that we serve, Pamela Mitchell, is infinite. He's self-existing. He's without origin. He was before all things. He is in all things. And he's working through all things. The God that I serve is om omnipresent. He's always there. He's here. He's there. And he's everywhere. Who wouldn't serve a God like my God? Thank you, Jesus. David said, where can I go? From your spirit, where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. Oh, yeah. The God in us, sir, he's eternal. He has no bounds of dimension of time. He created time as a temporary context of his creation. With God, everything that has ever happened or will ever happen will not occur without his awareness. He compasses eternity. The God that I serve, thank you, Jesus, is all self-sufficient. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He sent his Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Sometimes when we are lonely and don't know what to do. But if you call in the name of Jesus, he'll come swiftly to your rescue. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jeremiah said, and you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I come to tell you today that when you're in trouble, if you get down on bending knees and call on Jesus, call him early in the morning. Call him during the noonday. Call him during the midnight hour. Some way, somewhere, somehow, 
God will see you through. God will heal your body. God will give you peace. God will set you free. Did it. Just for me. Leland, put it this way he's a way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Went on to say, even though I don't see that you're working, even though I don't feel that you're working, you never stop. Never stop working. Just for me. So as we prepare ourselves to receive this memorial meal. And on the fine linen, I believe it's up there in remembrance of me. We can take an image of our lives and see where the Lord has brought us from. Got saved in 1981. Now remember the things that I used to do. Just as the man that I should die, the Lord gave me an opportunity to get my soul right with him. Wasn't fit to live. Wasn't ready to die. But somebody prayed for me. had me on their mind. Mother Rachel Brown, they took the time to pray for me. And I just want to testify today, I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. We broke it down and said, my mother prayed for me. Had me on the mind. Took the time to pray for me. So we prepare ourselves to receive these sacraments. We need to give God praise. For sending his son to die on the cross. For the sins of the world. That we may have a right to the tree of life. John the Revelator said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. He said, God can wipe all tears from their eyes. There'll be no more sorrow, no more crying, no more death. The former things shall be passed away. And we said, every day going to be Sunday. Sabbath will have no end. Don't have to worry about chairman, Mr. the deacon putting you out of the church after the time they expire because you got to go somewhere else. We can praise God every day, 24 7. Went on to say that, and God Himself. 
will be their God. God. They said, let there be light and the sun appear. God. Put the moon in the place. If the moon is in a certain place, we have tidal flooding. What an awesome God we serve. God took his hand and tossed the stars in the sky. God created man in his own image. Jesus died that we may have a right to the tree of life and the leaves on the tree were for the healing of the next. Will you be ready? To answer the call. Have you been faithful to Jesus at all? If an angel will call you to judgment right now, will you be ready to answer the call? Yes, Jesus died for the sins of the world. But if you don't repent, and accept him as your Lord and Savior. It don't mean anything to you. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Where will you spend eternity? Heaven's going to melt with a great and fervent heat. The elements in the work there are going to be burned up. The Bible says what manner of person are you to be in all godliness and holy conversation? We have time to be concerned about what other folks are doing. Hey Amen. We got six months to mind our own business. Six months to mind to leave everybody else's business alone. We need to do a self-examination. As I read in the scripture, the scripture said, but let a man examine himself. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper, many in sleep, many have died. Jesus died on the cross just for me. Extend the opportunity to you today. If you do not, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior on today, the doors of the church are open to you today. It's just a simple prayer, a simple confession. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. If you confess to your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And the disciple was concerned that Jesus was making preparation to go to his father he was making preparation to go to the cross he said I'm going to prepare a place for you and then where I am mother Tally you're going to be there also let us pray father God in the name of Jesus again we thank you for your loving kindness thank you for your tender mercy thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to die for the sins of the world Thank you for giving us the right to the tree of life, oh God. Where every day will be Sunday and Sabbath will have no end. There will be no more heartaches, no more sorrow, no more disappointment. The former thing will be passed away. We thank you for the day and those who are here on the side of my voice and those who are watching the service live stream, God. If they have not taken the time out to accept you as the Lord and Savior today, touch them on today and heal the sick and afflicted, oh God. Many desire to be in our presence, God, not able to make it. Touch and heal the liver, God, and set us free. And these are the blessed we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. great honor and privilege, amen, to have in our presence, amen, Chief Apostle Treadwell.
Amen. He's coming at this time, amen, to give us greetings. Amen. Let's give him a hand ovation. Amen. Amen. Uh, good afternoon. I bless you all with joy and favor. It is an honor to be here on today. Uh, bring you greetings from Performing Christ Ministries in uh, Chicago, Illinois. So thankful for you all opening up your hearts and your church to allow me and my wife to worship and fellowship with you on today. I thank God for Apostle Charles and Apostle Stephanie for Amen. inviting Amen. us to come down. Amen. I thank God for uh, Pastor Hughes and that wonderful, inspirational, doctrinal message that he gave on today. Thank you all for inviting us. Thank you for having us. Amen. God bless you. Amen. As we prepare our hearts and mind to receive, amen, the Lord's Supper. Amen. The Elder Delbert Davis is coming again with our scripture reading. The Minister Rashawn Kennedy is going to lead us in our prayer of the sacraments as we serve communion in remembrance of the Lord. Our scripture reading this morning as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Coming out of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 30. And read as thus. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he has given thanks, he break it and said, take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he has supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he come Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly, amongst you and many sleep. Father God, we come to you this morning, O oh God. We tell you thank you for sending your son, our savior, O oh God, to die on the cross, O oh God. God, as we examine ourselves this morning, O oh God, we ask that you forgive us of all sin, O oh God. If we've done anything, O oh God, that's not like you, offended anybody, O oh Father God, we ask that you forgive us right now, O oh God. God, if you do these things, we'll tell you thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and amen. Jesus said, this is my body, which was broken for you. Of the Lord, shall we eat?
Apart from the shedding of blood, there's the remission of sin. We walk in the light, and he's in the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ shall make us whole. Shall we drink? Jesus said, as often as you do this, you do a remembrance of me, gentle me, but now I'm going to serve the congregants. We all stand to be served. So you won't forget 
As we stand for our benediction, we ask that you will leave at, at the rear of the building to shake our pastor's hand and the other associate ministers. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for allowing us again, Lord. We thank you for your burial on today, Lord. There's food for our souls. Thank you for our communion on today, O oh God, for blessing us, God, to be here. Lord, we ask you, O oh God, to increasing us, O oh God, your faith, Lord. And let us, O oh God, meet back at this place at the, the designated time. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You're in the hands of the ushers. The church.